Let me ask you a question. Why do you play video games? Just think about it for a second. Why do you really like enjoy video games? And in fact, like, do you even enjoy them? Do you play games for their cool stories or fun mechanics? Or is it just a way to relieve stress after a long day of work? Or as an escape from the never ending chaos in the world and to cover up your worries about the future and the inevitability of death? Or do you just like shooting aliens in the head? Me personally, I initially fell in love with gaming because of how it made me feel things. And yeah, that's vague, but that's how it felt. In visiting worlds I couldn't otherwise, I could experience emotions I often found hard to convey early as a teenager when I first fell in love with gaming. An example of this is a game called Ori in the Blind Forest, and it's one of my all-time favorites despite how simple yet impactful its visual storytelling is. It's a game that relies heavily on its visuals and its soundtrack to really pull you into the story with very little dialogue, and it's something I remember to this day and I played it maybe seven years ago at this point. Recently, with all these games coming out this year though, I've been feeling a little tired playing all of these massive hits back to back. Even though I've been enjoying myself immensely, going from massive game to massive game has been taking a little bit of an emotional and kind of mental toll on me, which I know, very first world problem, I know, but I like to be invested in these stories and worlds as much as I can. In contemplating this strange feeling I've been having recently, I have begun to realize that I kind of been telling myself a lie about gaming, and that in order for a game to be worth my time, it had to have either engaging combat, a gripping story, a massive open world, all these sprawling choices, etc, etc. Which, yes, I do love a lot, but in doing so, I kind of have begun to realize that I've been robbing myself the reason I fell in love with gaming in the first place. That simple reason of feeling something, no matter the style of game I was playing. In order to try and alleviate this strange burnout sort of feeling in the midst of all these massive games I'm playing, I decided to slow down and pick up a short, simple game called Gris to just try and cleanse my palate. Yet what ended up happening is something far more. If you're like me and you've been feeling this way, then this may just be the video for you. So sit back, relax, and let me tell you about how I have begun to rediscover my love for gaming in the hopes that you can do the same. I don't know about you all, but post-game depression is very real, and was something I was very much feeling the day before I picked up Gris. I had just finished Cyberpunk's Phantom Liberty expansion and was not only floored by that emotional ending, Ooh, and feeling all the things, and let me tell you, I'm still recovering from it, okay? But I was also just tired. I had gotten from Tears of the Kingdom to Baldur's Gate 3 to Starfield to Cyberpunk, and I've only finished Cyberpunk out of that list and Tears of the Kingdom. And while fully enjoying each game, I desperately needed something different. So in looking at my modest backlog, I remembered I owned Gris, which I didn't know much about besides that it was a short and sweet, four-ish hour relaxing experience like Abzu or Journey. Little indie game style, 2D, pretty art music, all those things. And that was exactly what I was looking for. Despite knowing all of this though, and knowing of something I'd probably enjoy, I hadn't yet played it. Primarily because I didn't fully see the appeal besides the pretty art style and music, which as I mentioned was something I'd fallen in love with early in my gaming career, but I haven't gone out of my way to experience much of as of late despite still knowing deep down that I would love it. So I kind of reluctantly booted it up, still emotionally drained from cyberpunk and all the mental expectation I had of games being something that required sucking up all my free time and often energy in order to properly enjoy them. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is Gris was outside of my current comfort zone with gaming. The idea of a gaming comfort zone may sound good to you, right? Well, not exactly, because just like in real life, being in a comfort zone is often a dangerous thing. Even though it may feel good in the moment, because it's an easy thing to do, it's also a dangerous one as well, because staying in your comfort zone, whether at work or in a relationship or in your gaming selections, will more often than not be detrimental to that passion. A comfort zone at work could lead you to taking fewer risks and not working as hard, and therefore maybe missing out on some career opportunities, and one in a relationship will inevitably lead to that relationship becoming stale, as you don't try anything new or different together, and a comfort zone in gaming can lead to a lack of enjoyment from a hobby you once loved. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying playing the same kinds of games are bad. Not at all, in fact, as the question I asked at the beginning of the video is one we all have different answers to. 
We all come to gaming for different reasons, but often we can get caught up in enjoying the comfort of our own space that we've created that we miss out on experiencing that love in new, exciting ways. Let me give you an example of this. Say, you and your partner recently bonded on your love of food, and especially your love of McDonald's fries. You bonded so much over that that you decide every date you have will include those fries, no matter what. And it's great at first. You love spending time with each other, and you love McDonald's fries. But over time, if that's the only food that you enjoy together, you may come to resent those fries, and furthermore, you may come to resent food or the relationship entirely. Now, I know that this is a bit of a ridiculous example, and it may not have made all that much sense, I, I acknowledge that, but I think you get the idea. I was trading massive AAA games as the french fries, and thus my love of gaming had begun to dwindle, as after all, there are only so many McDonald's french fries you can eat, and there are only so many open world, do all the things games a person can handle. This brings me back to Gris. Going into this game, I thought it was going to be a calm, relaxing experience where I would just kind of space out, listen to pretty music, which it certainly was. But what I also got was an amazing slap in the face with a beautiful, heartbreaking story about the five stages of grief told with almost zero dialogue and the most incredible art design I've ever seen in a game. You play as a young girl named Gris in the aftermath of some trauma, but it's not specified what exactly the trauma is, so it's really up to your own interpretation. But you guide her as she wrestles and tries to overcome this grief that is threatening to pull her down. The art and the world not only represent these emotions, but actually changes in correspondence to these stages of grief, as we see both Gris and the world respond to the emotions she experiences and overcomes as color is added back into her life and sometimes taken away. This visualization is accompanied by one of the most incredible scores I have ever had the pleasure of experiencing in a video game. I mean, seriously, I've been playing it throughout the video so far because it's such a work of art on its own, and coupled with the art style, it comes together beautifully to tell this wonderful emotional story. This style of storytelling is completely opposite to what I'd grown accustomed to in recent years, as I'd unwillingly kind of started to stay in my McDonald's fry comfort zone of games being long, story-driven, open-world titles. Yet, as I mentioned before, one of my earliest memories of falling in love with a game was Ori, which is very much like Gris in its story presentation and unique art style and music. An important note about Gris, though, is that the majority of the story and the themes are widely up to interpretation, and that really allows you to put yourself in the shoes of this character. An example of this, without getting into too much spoilers, is a recurring statue that plays a key role in the game. My interpretation of this is that it represented Gris herself, reconciling her emotions with her inner being, but come to find out after I'd finished the game that it may have actually been representing something different. Despite all this though, my experience wasn't negatively affected, and in fact it was actually kind of enhanced. Because it's not often that a game presents itself in a way that allows the player to have such freedom of interpretation while not being a detriment to their experience. And for me, this was most evident in the section of the game where Gris is having to deal with the depression stage of grief. As someone who deals with depression on a daily basis, this part of the game was incredibly impactful to me. It's one that is visualized through swimming under an ocean that gets progressively darker and more dangerous as Gris continues on. Yet even in the perilous expanse, she keeps going, guided only by faint lights that guide her one step forward at a time. There's this point in this dark, murky landscape where the kind of personification of Gris's emotions bursts forth from the shadows and attempt to pull her further and further into the depths that she's trying to escape from. And it was this moment that fully centered my connection with this game. Besides being such a vivid, perfect visualization of what it often feels like to be dealing with depression, it was here that my brain began to unravel the lie that I had been kind of telling myself. The one that a game had to be this massive, intricate uh, experience to be worth my time and my emotional investment, and the weariness and expectation that gaming, the hobby I once loved, had to always be this massive experience to be worth it. In its four-ish hour runtime, Gris made me feel such a variety of emotions that many AAA games barely deliver in their 30 hour runtimes, and connected me to a character so quickly through the simplest story devices, the music and the art. And often that's enough to tell a wonderful story and to feel something. 
At the beginning of this video, I asked you all a question. Why do you play video games? Even if you didn't have a solid answer, the question was meant to kind of get you to simply pause and think, wait, yeah, why, why do I play games? And hopefully to lead you to thinking about why you fell in love with this pastime in the first place. Often I find that in such a fast paced landscape where games come and go, I can easily get so overwhelmed with the next best thing that I rush through a game and miss out on something I could have enjoyed much more. Playing a game like Gris at this time of massive releases brought me back to my first gaming love and reminded me that for myself, my enjoyment of a game doesn't actually come from a million and one things all being stuffed into one massive package, but in the simple, quiet moments where a game fully envelops you in itself and invites you into an experience like no other. So, I invite you all to try and go outside of your comfort zone, to set down whatever your McDonald's fries are, and in the process you may just rediscover your love for gaming. Thank <laughs> you.